Hello, students, and welcome to our second session uh, for today. So we will be continuing on from Thomas Hardy's poems. So uh, in our last session, we had an introduction to the biographical details of Thomas Hardy. And we also talked about a small introduction to this poem uh, as well. We also said like uh, it was, this was a poem which was uh, written to Florence Henniker. So therefore the she who is identified is this uh, in this poem is a reference to Florence Henniker. And we talked about her background and her relationship, uh, her friendship with the poet uh, in our previous session as well. So from now or from here, here on, we will first have a reading of this poem and then we'll go to an analysis. The thunderstorm in town. She wore a terracotta dress, and we stayed because of the pelting storm within the handsome sprite recess. Though the horse had stopped, yeah, motionless, we sat on, snug and warm. Then the downpour ceased to my sharp, sad pain, and the glass that had screened our forms before flew up, and out she sprang to the door, to her door. I should have kissed her in the rain if the rain had lasted a minute more. Okay, so now let's go to the analysis of this poem. It starts with uh, saying that she may be most probably a reference to Florence Henniker, as uh, we mentioned in our last session, wore a terracotta dress. So terracotta is like a, a brownish orange colored dress, right? And this uh, terracotta dress is significant as it automatically connects the woman with nature, right? Because this is like a brownish orange color. These are like uh, more or less natural colors, right? So per perhaps what Hardy is trying to emphasize here is that uh, their love is pure. Uh, it's very unadulterated, that uh, it is very much interconnected with nature. So maybe by the reference to the dress being, uh, by the color of the dress being so much intertwined with those of natural colors, that is what perhaps uh, Hardy is trying to suggest, right? That, that, that their love is pure and unadulterated because it is connected with that and intertwined with that of nature. And then he says, and we stayed because of the pelting storm within the handsome dry recess. Uh, so now uh, he's saying that uh, she, she, the Florence Seneca probably, she wore a terracotta dress and they stayed inside of a handsome, uh, handsome cab uh, because they did not want to get wet in the pelting heavy storm, right? So basically the poet and this uh, lady, they have gone out somewhere. It is not mentioned where they have gone in this particular poem. And then they have come back to the lady's house, but the lady cannot get out of the cab because there's a pelting heavy storm outside, right? So she's staying inside this uh, handsome cab alone with the poet. So it is that moment, that very uh, small, uh, very, uh, a very uh, small but still significant moment that the poet is talking about. Small meaning because this is not a moment which took a lot of time, right? It is just like for a few moments that uh, uh, the lady stayed inside the handsome cab with the poet. But still, though it was like very, very for a very few moments, you see that it is still on the poet's mind, right? So this is like a, a a recollection of that moment which was spent in the past, that very small uh, moment which was spent in the pa past with, along with this lady, uh, which seemed to have like a very significant impact over, on the poet. And we learn as to why when we read the poem. So he says that uh, they are staying inside the handsome cap for dry races for, for the purposes of not getting, but they're staying inside the handsome cap. So a handsome cap is basically uh, something like this, right? As you can see in the picture, uh, where there is a two-wheeled horse-drawn cab 
commanding the people inside. With the driver, as you can see, who is seated in the back. So therefore, with the driver seated in the back and there, there are being like such a small space inside, if two people are there, you can clearly see that there is more privacy because it is away from the eyes of the driver who is nearly at the back of the cab, right? Uh, so especially this is during Victorian England where, uh, where this, uh, this kind of uh, proximity between a married lady uh, and a married man who are not of course married to each other seem to be like uh, seem to be quite rare right especially outside because this is victorian england which uh, valued a lot of the values such as propriety modesty and all of that so therefore you see that this uh, terror this uh, handsome cab allows more privacy uh, as well as protection from weather too, because it is all covered. So that is the reason why they stay inside the cab without getting out, because she probably doesn't want her terracotta dress getting wet, right? And then uh, she says, the next few lines, let's go back to the poem. Through, uh, though the horse had stopped, yeah, motionless. So again, you see, uh, he's referring to another natural image. Right, he's referring to an animal, he's referring to the, the horse. Earlier, he was referring to the pelting storm, a heavy storm, another like natural phenomena. And then he was also referring to the terracotta grass, which has natural colors. So therefore you see this very interesting interplay with that of nature, that he's referring to natural colors, natural phenomena. And perhaps these are like, all images which are incorporated to convey and express about the very pure and unadulterated nature of their relationship, right? Because you know that this was a friendship, though, uh, though apparently Hardy did make some sexual advances towards Henika, she did not want to have such a relationship. She was always loyal to her husband. But at the same time, we know that they had a special friendship because they were able to they were able to understand each other they were able, able to like very uh, communicate each other they were very good friends right so therefore this is the kind of connection that we have and the reason why he's like referring to all these natural images uh, is perhaps to convey about the nature of their relationship which did not go to this uh, very carnal uh, very car in, which did not go to a very carnal kind of relationship. It was a friendship, right? Despite the fact that the poet did make sexual advances towards her. And then uh, he continues on to say, though the horse had stopped, he are motionless. So the horse has stopped, that means uh, the, the handsome cat has stopped in front of the lady's house. And uh, they're sitting inside. We sat on, snuck and warm. So here the reference uh, snug and warm is important because uh, it conveys about the proximity as well as the intimacy, right? In intimacy, right? It conveys the proximity of the two, uh, of the man and woman, as well as the intimacy, right? So therefore the language which is incorporated by uh, the poet so express these kind of, uh, express these kind of feelings and sentiment, snug and warm. And then he says, then the downpour ceases. So finally, the downpour of the rain stops to my sharp, sad pay. So this does not make the poet happy, right? It, may, it stops, the storm stops for his sad pain. And why is he sad? Because now the lady has to go inside, back inside the house. And the glass that had screened our forms before flew up. And out she sprang to the door. I should have kissed her if the rain had lasted a minute more. Um, so maybe um, the reference here, uh, the assumption here is that uh, though they sat snug and warm inside the cab, it is still like a very temporary kind of moment for, these, uh, for this man and woman, right? So therefore, the proximity that these two shared is very temporary, right? Because she has to go back to the husband now. She cannot spend too much time with him, right? 
just so therefore she sprang to her door. She flew up. The words, uh, the words uh, here, flew up and sprang to the door, again conveys this urgency, haste, and immediacy, right? Conveys a uh, urgency, haste, and immediacy uh, on the part of the woman who is like, who, as we know, did not respond to hardy sexual advances. If we consider that this was a poem written to Florence Henniker because she was loyal to her husband, right? So maybe she also did not want this uh, to be like this moment to last, right? So therefore, that is the reason why she went back. And the poem regrets the fact that he did not kiss her, right? He says, I should have kissed her in the rain had, uh, had it lasted a minute more. So here we can say that uh, a, 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 to a certain extent, fatality is conveyed through these lines, right? Fatality. Uh, so what is fatality? Fatality uh, means uh, basically helplessness as well as inevitability, inevitability in the face of fate, right? Helplessness or the inevitability in the uh, in the face of in the face of fate, right? So perhaps these lines are conveying fatality because uh, for Hardy, this is a kind of friendship which he shares with this woman, uh, a friendship and a relationship which is leading to do, right? For the for Hardy at least, because he is in love with a woman who is married to another man and who is not only married to another man, but also very loyal to that man and does not respond to his sexual advances. So therefore these lines conveys fatality. This is, that means this is not a relationship which is ever meant to be. They are not going to end up together no matter how much the poet regrets the passing moment, right? Um, and interestingly, uh, you, you know that uh, if you have read the novels of Thomas Hardy, you know that apparently uh, fatality and inevitability uh, uh, and helplessness as of the individual in the face of fate is something he recurrently engages in in his novels. So two novels where you see him uh, in a very constant way engaging with uh, these concepts are Tess of the Devils as well as uh, Jude Obscure, right? He, he engages a lot with fatality uh, in those novels as well. And even in this poem, he engages with it. Even in the next poem we will be studying, he also engages with it, right? Okay. Um, and um, yes, so therefore, like you see, he's talking about a missed opportunity, a uh, missed opportunity where he could have kissed her. So therefore he speaks about a moment of regret, right? He's regretting the fact that at that moment where they sat close and snug together, he did not kiss her. Uh, but at the same time, this is also a realization that he comes uh, with, comes to alone with, comes to with sadness. Sadness because this is a missed opportunity, but also the fact that the realization of such a desire is impossible considering the circumstances. So therefore the fact that he's going through this, uh, recollecting this moment in his mind is again, maybe due to fatality because the realization of such a desire, such a desire as kissing this lady is impossible considering the circumstances surrounding the two. She's married and she's loyal to her husband. They're only sharing like, uh, she from her part only has a very special friendship with the poet. Right, so those are the circumstances. Um, and apart from that, uh, we can also look at uh, the rhyming scheme of this poem, right? So we look at the rhyming scheme, of course, we can understand it in terms of the words which rhyme here. So here, dress would be A. I will use another color because this is not very obvious. So dress is A, storm is B, uh, and then we have recess, which is A, dress and recess, A, A, and then um, 
motionless recess motionless again a and then we have warm which uh, which rhymes along with storm right so therefore we can identify this as b and then we have um, c pain before d and then uh, the next line do which is again d next line rain which rhymes with pain again c and then mo which rhymes along with do which is d so as you can see it is a b a b c d so c d uh, c d d c d right so that is the kind of uh, scheme that we can see in this particular poem so that leads us to the end of our lecture and that is the place we will stop our second lecture on thomas hardy's poetry i will meet you again in the next lecture thank you very much for listening